Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Sunday mountain weather update, and it's another powder day across a few different locations, parts of Colorado, parts of the Wasatch, and also the Tetons with additional snow coming. The next storm is already coming down the pipeline. This is Vail. It's definitely a powder day, 11 inches, and it's still snowing there in Vail. Uh, 11 inches in the last 24 hours. We've got uh, what I like to call the residual shrouding effect uh, from Vail over to, uh, through I-70, Summit County, Continental Divide, Northern Mountains. That's going to hang on this morning. Uh, let me take you over to Aspen Snowmass, reporting 7 inches up there at Snowmass. Should be a great day there. Uh, no snow falling right now. You may still have another passing snow shower or two, but your next storm's coming in tomorrow um, into 1-7. Uh, over in the Wasatch, pretty amazing. I mean, you got hammered yesterday uh, morning, yesterday in general, but 19 inches in the last 24 hours. I'm sure there's still good powder left over this morning up there. Season total, 184. Up the road in the Tetons, you picked up, I think, four inches of new snow in the last 24 hours, and you've got the next batch uh, coming in this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow. Here's radar across the west, and you can see that here comes this next... Uh, little uh, chunk of moisture coming down this west-northwest flow out of Washington, Oregon, into Idaho. Um, eventually, it's going to shoot down into the Wasatch and refire the snow over the Tetons and then move into Colorado uh, tomorrow. So that's what's coming. In fact, here's Colorado. Uh, now, on the front end of this, in fact, let me just show it to you. You can kind of see the low that departed. Here it is. We've got this ice and snowstorm for the Mid-Atlantic and the Midwest. Uh, all the ice is in the purple and the pink, and you've got all that heavy snow on the north side through Kansas City. St. Louis, Evansville, Louisville heading into Ohio, West Virginia, and eventually Baltimore, Washington. This storm will not uh, have a big effect at all on the big ski areas of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. You're going to have to wait for a larger storm further down the road. Uh, but let me take you back. Here's Colorado, a little bit of leftover snow for parts of the eastern plains of Colorado, and you can't see it up around I-70, but a little bit of that, that residual shrouding effect this morning up there. Um, and then it will dry out. Um, here's Salt Lake. You can see the snow coming just to your north. So that drops in this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow with some light to moderate snow accumulation. Here's the, uh, the water vapor satellite imagery this morning. Oranges and reds are drier air. Here's your moist air, and that's the storm system, the ice and snowstorm right there. A um, little bit of wraparound behind it through Colorado and Wyoming. And then here comes this northwest, this west-northwest flow. Still shooting down through parts of Idaho, the uh, uh, Wasatch, the Tetons, and Montana. So whatever's upstream is just going to flow down, and that's what's going to happen with our next storm system. There's a low right here, and there's already moisture out ahead of it. So that's what's coming. Here are my bullet points this morning. So you got some resid residual snow over the central and northern mountains of Colorado this morning. Then you're going to get a break in the action, and you're going to have to wait for the next storm, which comes in. Uh, in Utah, Idaho, and the Tetons this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, and then into Colorado, 1617. Um, another storm system down the road, potentially for many of the same places, 110, 111. I showed you the Midwest ice storm and snowstorm. That's going to run through 16. Uh, in the northeast, there could potentially be a larger storm around 111 and 112. So all of that is potentially coming. Here's my snow timeline. Best odds of snow for the Wasatch Tetons, Colorado. And you can really see the timing here with the next storm, 1516, maybe into early 17 for Colorado. Uh, and then um, you've got 111, 110, and 111 with the next storm system with potentially moderate to heavy snow accumulation. Um, through interior BC, light initially, and then maybe potentially moderate on 110. The northeast, light initially, heavier with that possible storm on 111 and 112. Okay, let's drill down on Alta, Utah. So this is the forecast mediagram, effective about 9,000 feet. There's our column for today, Sunday, there's Monday, there's Tuesday, there's Wednesday. And so the snow comes in this afternoon, you can see the blue increasing um, through tomorrow morning, peaks probably early midday, still snows through the afternoon. This model does not accumulate a whole lot of uh, snowfall maybe two to four inches um, through Alta, Snowbird, Solitude, and Brighton. And notice there's a little bit of wind out ahead of it, but there's not a lot of wind here to drive this orographic snow. And so it's really lacking 
that uh, that upslope support that we need, which we had yesterday morning. I mean, that storm was blowing 50, 60 miles an hour straight out of the west northwest, driving that snow production. That's <clears throat> that doesn't appear that that's going to happen with this next storm system. All right, so that's Alta Utah. <clears throat> Let me show you snow accumulation over time. So this is the snow forecast over a 12-hour period, but you can see it. I'm going to start it at lunchtime today. Look at all the snow out there in parts of Nebraska and Kansas. Red is 10 inches or more. Um, and you can see a little bit of residual snow over the central and northern mountains of Colorado. All right, let's advance this. Late tonight, here comes our next storm coming down the pipeline out of Idaho, Montana, and running through the Tetons. Drops down into the Wasatch. Here we are early tomorrow morning. Some of the snow begins to uh, develop over the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Continues to snow. Here's late on Monday the 6th. Snow through Utah. Wyoming, Colorado. <clears throat> Continues. This is early on the 7th. The storm is diving down into Colorado in the morning hours. And then it begins to slide down through Denver and the Front Range with some snow on Tuesday. You can see it there, a little bit of snow right down the I-25 and I-70 corridors. And then by the time we get into late Tuesday, it's moving away. And then it moves down into southern Colorado and northern New Mexico into the early morning hours of the 8th. And that's it for a little while. We're going to have to wait until potentially, like I said, 110, 111 for the next storm to come in from the north. Okay, let me show you Colorado. We'll drill down just a little bit. And you can see how this plays out. This is the time height forecast for Vail Pass. I'm looking for green. That's humidity, and we've got it. This is a forecast for 72 hours out. Um, the timeline's at the bottom. You read that from right to left. So we're in the moisture. We've got high humidity this morning, this afternoon, and it really intensifies. That humidity really builds through a lot of the atmospheric layers um, starting um, tomorrow into the 7th with that next storm system. So we're going we're gonna to generate some snow. It's not going to be a ton, but I do think we'll see some. For example, here's Vail Pass with the same model forecasting about four or five inches um, <clears throat> between this morning, this afternoon, and that storm coming in tomorrow. So not a ton, but maybe four or five inches. And again, maybe some additional snow down the road with that storm on 110 and 111. Here's my official forecast. So all of today through 112. Uh, in the Wasatch, four to eight inches. And some of that uh, comes in again this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, and then again 110, 111. Um, in Colorado, it's the combination of two storms as well across a lot of the I-70 corridor north with four to eight inches of accumulation from Vail to Snowmass to Crested Butte up in the Summit County and the Continental Divide. And some snow for southern Colorado as well. Late in the period, uh, potentially two to four inches of accumulation. Up in Wyoming, maybe 10 on the way for Jackson Hole, Grand Targhee, potentially a foot for Big Sky and also Bridger Bowl. Uh, four to six up there in northwest Montana. Not a whole lot for interior BC, two, three, four, five inches will probably do it. And up in the Pacific Northwest, six, seven, eight, nine inches of accumulation. And I don't have anything for uh, Tahoe or Mammoth during that time frame, unfortunately. All right, in the Northeast, now this could be a big deal. Again, that 111, let me show you the timing again here. 111, 112 for the Northeast. That could bring heavy snow accumulation. Uh, could be looking at a foot or more of accumulation if that storm develops. Uh, Mount Snow up to Killington, JP could be looking at a foot, maybe over a foot through parts, parts of Massachusetts, depending on the track of that, that low pressure uh, on 111 and 112. Potentially up to maybe 18, 20 inches over Mount Washington, and some decent numbers through Whiteface as well down to Snow Ridge. So again, a lot of that is dependent on that 111, 112 storm. So we'll end on the big west map here. And again, we still have... Uh, one to two storm systems to go, and that's how I reach these totals through the Wasatch, Colorado, and the Tetons, potentially 6, 8, 10, 12 inches of accumulation. All right, guys, enjoy it. Have a good rest of the weekend, and just loving this powder. We're getting very consistent here, and it looks like that's going to continue. Uh, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care.